Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Slingshot. This is your first week joining us. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. My name is Luke Myers. I'm the middle school coordinator here at Rock Harbor Church. And sitting next to me is our executive director of adult ministries. That's a lot of words. That's a big title. That's a very big title. This is actually John Link. John, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. You're Luke. doing great? I'm doing so good. I, I mean, words... Wouldn't even do it justice. Wow, so, that's really yeah. good. Now, John, really quick, just so our viewers and our mm -hmm. students can come to know mm -hmm. you just a little bit more, can you tell yeah. us just a fun fact about yourself? Maybe something from middle school. From middle school. Oh, let me think about that. Um, hey, I've got a great one. I do mean, you? I'm gonna drink let's my just talk about your hair. Me. I mean, mm -hmm. your hair is looking great today, mm -hmm. by the way. I mean, like, Thank you, you, very you much. definitely spent some time on that. When I was in middle school, I spent a lot of time on my hair because I had a lot of it as well. And mm -hmm. I had what you would call a mullet. Ooh. And my mullet, uh, in one word, would be described as fierce. Oh. I had a fierce mullet. Uh, it was <laughs> it was business on top and party in the back, but my mullet was actually party on top and party in the back. And oh, it, and all it around was party. It was impressive, man. <laughs> I, I miss it. I mean, Do you? I think I'm going to... Go with that. that is, I mean, I should have done it, did that, it at the beginning of coronavirus, but that's I, a great I fact. I love that. So. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, uh, today we are actually going to be jumping into a periodic series that we have throughout the year called Tough Topics. And if you've never joined us for this series before, this is just a time where we take a very difficult and hard to handle issue and talk about it in a very practical way, talking about what the Bible actually has to say about a specific topic. And today we're actually uh, going to be jumping into the issue of divorce, which is definitely a, a very difficult issue. I think that's something that actually affects a lot of us as well. Um, but John is actually going to be sharing with us today what the Bible has to say about this difficult topic of divorce. But John, before we get started today, do you mind if I pray for us? Yeah, that'd be great, man. Okay. Father, thank you so much for today. Lord, thank you for this opportunity that we have just to be able to talk about things like this. I feel like Topics like divorce, they often uh, aren't brought up, they aren't talked about, but Lord, we are thankful that you um, that you write about these things in your word, Lord, in, mm -hmm. in the Bible, uh, God, and that you want us to talk about these things and to work through these difficult feelings so that we can draw even closer to you uh, despite the pain or whatever else might be going on, um, especially during our difficult moments. So Lord, we thank you for this. Thank you for John, and Lord, we are just so thankful for today. In your name we pray. Amen. Yeah, well, right. thanks, Luke. And uh, first of all, I just want to say um, I've got four kids and three of those four have either gone through or are currently in Slingshot. And it is just an amazing ministry. Uh, you guys are so blessed to have this guy right here and Scott Nolan, all the leaders uh, within Slingshot. And uh, it's just an amazing ministry. We're all looking forward to when we could all get back together again as well. And so uh, just remember that. And so, yeah, today we're going to be talking about a topic that probably isn't at the top of everyone's list as far as things that they really want to talk about. Because the reality of it is um, it could be a source of, of hurt and, and pain and uh, you know, just a feeling of loss and, and disappointment, frustration, and even anger. And so um, it's just a, it's important to talk about because the reality of it is that um, 40 to 50 percent of marriages end up in, in divorce. And, um, you know, 60 to 70 percent of second marriages actually end up in divorce. And so, um, you know, with that being said, there are many of you guys that are probably listening to this right now that uh, you're your parents have either divorced or, or maybe you have a close friend uh, that their parents have divorced or, or sadly, you might even be going through the process uh, right now. And so for me personally, um, my parents actually are divorced as well. Um, they a little bit later in life than, than you guys that are probably listening right now, but um, my parents, when I was in high school, uh, they separated and then they eventually got divorced when I was in college. But I remember when I was in high school, that it was a very difficult uh, season of life for me. And so, so today we just want to give you some encouragement, uh, encouragement, just kind of help you through uh, if this is something that's going on in your life right now. Um, and like I said, it's, you know, it might be something that's uncomfortable to talk about, but uh, it's important to just recognize a couple things when we're actually uh, viewing this topic of divorce. And, you know, first and foremost, it's important, you know, a lot of those emotions that we just talked about, hurt and pain and loss and you know just that frustration and your life just might be in upheaval uh, just because you know 
having to go from this place to that place and you're probably just wishing and wondering why can't things just go back to normal and, and a lot of these emotions that you might be feeling um, it's just important to know that it's okay to be feeling those emotions and you know there's nothing wrong uh, for feeling that way at certain times of your life and it's just kind of a, a normal thing that takes place it's it's also important to understand that in light of everything that has taken place or maybe taken place um, it's not your fault uh, these are just things that, that happen. And it's just, uh, you know, a lot of times what the devil would want to do is to, you know, put on guilt and, and to kind of say, you know, it's your fault that maybe some of the thing, these things have happened, but, but that's, not, that's not the truth. That's not God's truth. You see, God has a plan and a purpose and, and his will for each and every one of our lives. And, and sadly, uh, sometimes just the level of brokenness and, and sin in all of our lives takes us out of God's plan. And God's plan is not divorce. And um, your parents, if they went through something like this, it's not something that they wished for or, or wanted to happen. But, but like I said, sometimes that, that level of sin and, and brokenness in our lives, uh, just divorce is sometimes a result or, or even a consequence of that. And, and so just know that um, despite everything that may have taken place or is currently taking place, that your parents... They love you very much. And, and some of these emotions that you might be, be having and feeling, they're completely normal. And, and it's not your fault. And, and just really kind of lean into the fact that you still have parents that love you uh, with a great love. And, and one way we just really want to encourage you as well is just to say, um, you know, it's great to really strengthen that relationship between you and your parents by uh, reciprocating that love that they have for you and just letting them know that they that you actually love them yeah. back and, and remember many of the feelings that you know you're feeling um, are undoubtedly feelings that your parents are feeling as well and, and so it's important that you know just to be able to express that love and, and gratitude back to them through your words and through your actions, it, it makes all the difference in the world. I mean, for example, you know, if your parents tell you, and these things, uh, a lot of them are, whether or not your parents are at a tough spot or not, um, whether your parents are divorced or, or, or not, these are all great things just to be doing. And you know, if, you're, if your parents tell you they love you, which I'm sure they do, make sure you tell them you love them back. I know it seems kind of silly and simple, but, it makes all the difference in the world, you know, just to say, Mom, I love you too. Dad, I love you too. And just give them a hug and just let them know that, you know, we're on the same team. And, you know, that just really helps strengthen that relationship that you have. Mm -hmm. Also, you could just express your love for them through your actions. And um, I think we kind of all know what that means. You know, if your parents ask you to do something, uh, just show them that respect. Show them that you are abiding by the rules of the household, uh, whether it be your parents or even your step-parents as well. Just really kind of saying, hey, yeah, if you ask me to do something, I'm going to make sure it gets done. Um, and I think we all kind of know what that means. I know it could be a little difficult right now with coronavirus and mm -hmm. online schooling and everything like now that's going on. But still, it's, it's so important just to really kind of show, reciprocate that love that your parents have for you through your words and through your actions. And uh, another great way to do that is, is just kind of really leaning into community. Right? Oh, absolutely. No, and I think that, first of all, that, that's a great point is, um, something I really like what you said is that, um, just the fact that, you know, for students who maybe are experiencing this, and maybe the, this is you watching right now, is that this is like, maybe you have gone through a divorce, or like your parents have gone through a divorce in the past, or maybe you're currently, this is your current circumstance, it just feels like it's taking over yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. So first of all, just knowing that you're not alone in that feeling, first of all, right. and that it's not your fault. I think that's from what I've heard from my friends who have gone mm -hmm. through, uh, whose parents have gone through a divorce, it's like, oh, I really feel like I had something to do with this. And the, and the fact is, it's it's not your fault. You, yeah. You're not the reason why your parents are deciding to split up or they have split up. Um, and then also recognizing the importance of connecting with your parents sure. still, recognizing yeah. your parents' love mm -hmm. for you. Uh, for sure. But kind of like what you were saying, community is huge. Um, I know that um, not just with divorce, but in many other difficult mm -hmm. things that we struggle with in our lives, that uh, we need to have people around us to mm -hmm. support us, to encourage us, especially for things like as serious as divorce. 
because those things really take a toll on us. Even if we don't admit it, or maybe even for you, it's like, I'm kind of actually happy that my parents got divorced because it, it feels like I, I'm thankful that I don't have to be around the conflict anymore. Mm -hmm. We still need people in our lives because that's a very serious thing. And a verse that actually, this, this whole thing made me think of is actually in Ecclesiastes. It's Ecclesiastes chapter four, uh, verse nine, where it talks about how two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. And actually, uh, it goes on later um, to say uh, the importance of having another person with you because it has, it gives you the ability to have someone pick you up. Mm. That when you feel like you're just knocked down by something maybe as serious as your parents having a divorce, or maybe even that you, for you, maybe it's not a divorce, maybe your parents are fighting. Um, yeah. Or uh, maybe you, you know someone who um, whose parents are getting a divorce. That gives us an opportunity as, as people who follow Jesus, as people who have experienced the, um, the adoption of, of Christ, that we have the ultimate Father in Jesus, that we had the opportunity mm -hmm. to show love to other people as well. Um, but knowing that if this is you, if you are going through um, this very difficult thing, it's so important to lean into other people. So whether that's a friend, whether that's people in your small group, maybe that's a, your small group leader, uh, maybe it's a, a teacher or a grandparent, someone that you can turn to and say, hey, I'm really struggling with this. I really need some help. I really need some prayer. Having that person and those people in your life is critical, especially with something as serious as divorce. Yeah, uh, that was so good. So important to just be leaning into those friendships and those people mm -hmm. in your life that, that really care for you mm -hmm. and love you. But, um, and our final point is probably the most important. Um, if you're going through some of these things that we're talking about right now, uh, the most important thing is just to be really leaning in and, and holding fast to your relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. it, it is and always will be the best place to go when you're dealing with a lot of these things, uh, a lot of these emotions, a lot of these thoughts, you know, a lot of the hurt, a lot of the pain, a lot of that feeling of loss, uh, that frustration and, and anger, taking it to the place that's always the best place to take it to, laying it at the feet of the Lord, um, putting it on His shoulders, uh, knowing that He loves you with a, with a love that is not comparable to anything that we'll ever experience in this world. And, and just really kind of leaning into the truth found in Scripture. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Psalm 18.2 states, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, uh, my rock in whom I take refuge. Uh, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And, and just leaning into that, knowing that He will protect you during some of these stor storms in your life. Matthew 11.30 states, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you feel the weight of the world is on your shoulders, put it on the Lord's shoulders. His, his burden is light. He could take whatever is going on in your life and, and just really carry you through that season. 1 Peter 5.7 states, Casting your anxieties on Him, uh, for He cares for you. And then if you're just feeling like, hey, you don't have any solid footing and, and the storm is just raging, uh, just really hold fast. Jesus tells us, or we're told that Jesus is a sure and steadfast anchor for our soul, Hebrews 6.19. And, and all of those things, when, when we're feeling all of these things, uh, just remember that he's always there. He's always there. He, he loves you more than any earthly mother or father could ever love you. He'll take you and, and just wrap his loving arms around you when you're going through some of these difficult seasons. Um, you know, he'll walk alongside of you. He'll go before you. He'll come around you. And, and when you're really struggling, he'll carry you through those storms. And, and so just really remember when, if you're going through some of these difficult times, just to uh, just remember that it's okay to feel some of these emotions. It's, it's not your fault. Uh, really kind of lean into your parents' love and, and reciprocate that love to strengthen that relationship with them. Uh, really kind of lean into uh, community and uh, friends and, and other family members even and just hold fast to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He will never fail us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is a, a friend that sticks with us through everything this world could throw at us. Mm, that was very good, John. Thank you very much for that. And I I love the point that you mentioned at the end. I think it can't be stated enough that 
when we're going through those difficult times, maybe it is, you know, like your parents are getting divorced or maybe it's something completely different that we feel very alone mm-hmm. in those moments. Would you agree? Yeah. 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 And, and I think that it's so important for us to remember that Jesus is mm. there. Yeah. That even though it may not feel like he is, that how important it is to hold fast, like you said, to that relationship. Because that's the most important relationship we're ever going to have because, uh, like you said, that he's our father mm-hmm. and he understands us like no one does. And so when we're able to take our, our cares or these things mm-hmm. before him, actually saying, God, I'm really angry at my parents or God, I'm really anxious that my parents are going to mm-hmm. split up mm-hmm. um, or I feel sad, I feel crushed that God understands those feelings, that nothing is, mm-hmm. um, is not understandable to yeah. him, that he knows exactly what you're going through and he wants to help you through it. So what, what an encouraging talk. Thank you very yeah. much for, for sharing that. I really yeah, appreciate thanks that. For having me, man. Thank yeah. you. Um, but guys, we actually, if this is something that, that really struck a chord with you, we would love to have the opportunity to pray for you. So if this is one of those things where you're like, hey, I, I am really struggling with maybe some of these feelings that we've talked about today because my parents have gone through a divorce or maybe my parents are fighting now or they are really going through a divorce right now, we want to pray for you. So please reach out to us. Uh, we would love to ha- take that time just to pray over you and, uh, and let you know that we are here for you as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but thank you guys so much for spending your time with us today. Uh, we hope to see you back here next week as we are launching our new series called Atypical, talking all about the joys of having a family. So make sure you are here for that next week. Thank you, John, again yeah, for joining us today. Have a good one. Boom. <gasps>